my sixth grade social studies teacher, Mr. Weber, was famous at our middle school because every year he had his students make a Babylonian sundial. This is a cool project. It turns out that making a Babylonian sundial is extraordinarily difficult. You can't do it the night before, don't try. <laughs> but I cannot tell you how into this project I got. My whole family got into this project. Every night at the dinner table, we talked about sundials. My little brother made a smaller, inferior sundial, kind of lopsided, and put it next to mine. <laughs> but why were we doing this project? The state of Texas does not require that all sixth grade students make a Babylonian sundial. It turns out that this project was just peculiar to Mr. Weber. He really liked sundials. And more than that, he thought it was a really good way to teach us about fractions and the value of hard work. And I think that if all of you here were to think about it, think about it now, you've probably had a teacher like Mr. Weber, that teacher who was a little bit unorthodox, who did things a little bit off the beaten path, but through that teacher's knowledge of sundials or the poetry of Robert Frost or fractions was able to inspire an entire classroom of kids to care about something that they didn't care about before. And I think that that is what great teaching is. It is passionate and it is creative. Great teachers take intellectual risks and they inspire their students to do the same. So what does this have to do with innovation? It is a really exciting time to be an innovator right now. There are so many smart, energetic, inspired people who are coming into this business and they're creating products to improve the system for all students. But one of the things that I have noticed as a former teacher and now as a new innovator in this space is that many of these new innovations start with the idea that there is one right way to teach a subject. And so this new computer program or this new app or this new curriculum is going to be so foolproof that there's no possible way that a teacher can screw it up. And I think that that's a mistake because diversity in teaching isn't a weakness. In fact, I think it's at the heart of what makes the American education system great. It's why I remain enamored of clocks with no moving parts that work in the northern and southern hemisphere. <laughs> I'm talking about sundials. <laughs> in the American education system, at its best, we empower teacher with our innovations, and then we trust them to bring those subjects to life. In 2014, it is possible for us to create a computer program that teaches a child vocabulary. But we cannot create a computer program that teaches a child how to think or to have a sense of self. The core truth of education in this country is that learning, the best kind of learning, happens in the interaction of a teacher and a student. That's the way it has been, that's the way it is now, and the point of this talk is that I think that's the way it should be in the future. When we fail to trust teachers with our innovations, we squander the greatest resource in our education system and we limit our children's futures. So where do we go from here? We need to create innovations that work through teachers, not around them. This means that teachers need to be louder about what resources they need to excel and more aggressive about bringing those into existence. And it means that innovators need to step back and they need to ask themselves, does this innovation support a teacher's passion and creativity? And if you take one thing away from this talk today, it's that this question, does this innovation empower a teacher, does it support their creativity, is not at the heart of innovation in education right now, but it should be. Thank you.